is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2025 toyota corolla hatchback courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today obviously because it is one of the most reliable cars in existence to this day you also do get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance you don't have to pay for that either so that's pretty cool and in case you were curious this one's going to compete with the Mazda 3 hatch and the Civic hatch because that's what I remember right now so that's pretty cool but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2025 corolla hatch first one being the se starting at twenty three thousand five hundred and five dollars which by the way is a very modest bump of only 150 dollars usually it's been increasing quite a bit if you compare it to the other manufacturers out there you got the nightshade starting at twenty four thousand five hundred and five dollars and the xse starting at twenty six thousand eight hundred and five dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the corolla hatch is going to be the same. Powering the little beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 169 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 151 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,800 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters, which of course you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at 7.5 seconds, which if you're comparing that to the Corolla sedan, Corolla sedan actually comes in at 7.8, so you're a little bit quicker here in the hatch. MPG numbers then coming in at 32 in the city, 41 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. So you gotta love that. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Corolla hatch, I do wanna mention to you guys the drive modes. There's a little silver toggle switch located just in front of the shifter. Those drive modes will include eco, normal, and sport, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test. I wanna see how quickly the paddle shifters are gonna react for us here. And of course, let's see how quickly we can get our new Corolla hatch here up to speed. All right, so before we do this, guys, I did want to mention there's a full manual shift mode. Keep in mind, this is a CVT, so we're not actually going to be shifting through any gears, but just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. We're in first gear, it says, and go. It's not bad. Huh. Whoa. <laughs> Dang. I kind of really like that, man. And the reason being is because when I'm shifting through the paddle shifters here, it actually feels like a traditional like six speed automatic. It feels like a legit automatic, although we know it's a CVT. So it, not every CVT does that. Sometimes like with Subaru, for example, if I'm shifting through the paddle shifters, it doesn't feel like you're shifting through anything whatsoever. But with the Corolla hatch, it's actually kind of fun. And the paddle shifters were quick as well. Now again, not shifting through anything, but it felt like I was, that's pretty cool. As far as the acceleration goes, it's pretty on par for the course. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but it'll certainly merge you onto any highway here in the US, so you shouldn't have any issues there either. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.5 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 129 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it's on the softer side of things, so wouldn't have minded a bit firmer of a braking feel. And quite honestly, that 129 foot number, there should be a little bit lower as well. This should be in like the low 120s is what I would expect, or at least the mid 120s. 129 is a little bit on the high side, so it kind of feels like that. A little bit softer of a braking feel. I would want to firm that up a little bit if I were Toyota, I'm just saying. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes in my short little test drive here today, probably cruising over some of the smoothest roads in Hagerstown right now, but it has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today, I will say that. And that's something I've noticed in my last 1,000 drives or so, is that the Corolla, when it comes to compact cars, traditionally rides a lot smoother than most if not all of the competition like for example 
the Honda Civic, for example. It's a night and day difference between the two, believe it or not. So it's, you feel so much more of the road in the Civic, whereas you feel so much less of the road in the Corolla. It's more of a luxury like ride quality, as luxury as it can be in a compact car, I'll just put it that way. As far as steering feel goes, it does make a substantial difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. It's a heavier feel to the steering in that sport driving mode. It's a really nice feel to the steering in that sport driving mode. Without that sport driving mode, it's a super loosey-goosey steering feel and that's something where I kind of like the Civic a little bit better because they have a firmer steering feel of that but it's kind of it's kind of nice though because it does give you something for everybody so it has the sport driving mode if you wanted a heavier feel and if you wanted a looser feel just put it in normal or eco so it kind of compromises there so that's kind of cool as far as cabin noise goes this is the perfect example we're going 48 miles per hour right now I think it's a relatively serene cabin you get a little bit of engine noise when you really get on it but other than that I've had no issues whatsoever there then take Taking a look at rear visibility, it's actually really good. It's not as bad as you would think it is because traditionally in hatchbacks, like let's say the Mazda 3, horrible visibility. You got massive blind spots in the back corners there, but with the Corolla hatch, it's actually relatively pretty darn good. A heck of a lot better than the Mazda 3 at least. So I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror there, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Toyota Corolla hatchback. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Toyota Corolla hatchback finished in a black slash classic silver metallic combo. It looks absolutely amazing with this combination in my personal opinion but as always let's go ahead to start with where the Corolla hatch is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the letter J indicating that the Corolla hatch is built and assembled in Japan so you're probably thinking who cares but you know it's a little interesting fact if you look at the Corolla sedan they are actually built and assembled here in the US for our US customers here so that's kind of interesting that the hatch is made in Japan still and the sedan is made in the US so a little fun fact for you but starting up front you will find a gloss black front grille that does come standard it does look a little bit different than the sedan of course a little more aggressive look in my opinion to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard you do get the automatic feature with those you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so my wife loves that feature it is pretty stinking cool and then to the bottom corners there you will find LED fog lights only if you go with the XSE trim that we have with us here today. So little added illumination there at night. So that's pretty stinking cool. I actually think the front end looks pretty darn good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Corolla hatch, black window surrounds do come standard. Body color, power adjustable side mirrors coming standard. However, that can be finished in a gloss black like we have with us here today as well. And you actually do get LED integrated turn signals for all trim levels across the board. So I thought that was personally pretty stinking cool. Again, with the two-tone roof that kind of continues on to the seat pillar there in the back, it looks good. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, there's gonna be three different sets of wheels dependent upon the trim level that you go with, of course. So kind of interesting there. 16 inch alloys for the SE. You're gonna find 18 inch bronze alloys for the nightshade they look absolutely amazing as well they look so sticking good but then right now you're looking at 18 inch alloys for our xse trim level so different wheel setup per different trim i guess that makes sense but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back All right and so now since we are around to the back of the corolla hatch as the bugs pick up their loudness all the way to the top you will find a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course to the sides there you do have led taillights they do come standard for all trim levels across the board i think they look dang good to the bottom corner there on the hatch you will find some trim level badging of course a lot of gloss black accents found on the bottom portion of the rear bumper to tie in together with the front of course that makes sense and there is a single exhaust outlet it is tucked away however with the hatchback i think they probably should have exposed that for a more aggressive look that's just my personal opinion but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> All 
Hide and Simonelle, since we are around to the back of the Corolla hatch here, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate, so there's a rubberized button back there. Just simply lift up and it's gonna open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Also found in that cargo area, you do have a cargo cover. Of course, you have cargo lighting, that's expected. There's a little bit of indented storage in the back corners there a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which you guys know I love compared to the fix the flat so that's pretty cool then make your way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 29.9 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there so on paper not a ton of space it's just about what i had on my old ford mustang gt uh there is a rear center armrest with cup holders you gotta love that dual rear usb charging ports also back there so you gotta love that as well um, if you wanted more rear legroom, I would say you may want to try the Corolla sedan because that does offer substantial more legroom than the uh, Corolla hatch. Just saying. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the SE and nightshade trims, soft text upholstery for the XSE trim that we have with us here today, eight-way power driver seat also for the XSE trim level, and you will get heated front seats for the XSE for both the driver and the passenger. So that's pretty sticking cool too. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was excellent. Uh, because of the power adjustable seats, I think. But actually, I remember driving the manually adjustable seats in the Corolla before, and they were plenty comfortable as well. So really, either way that you go, you'll be perfectly fine. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is going to be leather wrapped, actually, for every single trim level across the board. You don't always get that, so that's pretty sticking cool. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got all of your buttons located on one side of the key. Toyota logo on the bottom, just lock, unlock. Pretty basic key actually, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trims. So all I'm going to do here, is simply put my foot on the brake and press that black engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, gauge cluster is going to differ amongst the trim levels. So you will find analog gauges for the SE and the nightshade trim levels. However, you're gonna get a seven inch digital gauge cluster for the XSE that we have with us here today. Fuel information is all the way there to your right. It's giving you outside temperature, gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty and that's for all trim levels by the way it's just a little different look with the digital gauge cluster so a lot going on with that and uh the colors do change slightly depending upon the drive mode that you put it in like if you put it in eco you're gonna get some green hues if you put it in normal you're gonna get blue hues if you put it in sport you're gonna get some red hues but for the most part you just got that tachometer with the little digital speedometer located towards the upper portion of it so it doesn't look bad wouldn't have minded a bit more customization though if uh if I were designing it myself, I guess. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A frameless rear view mirror with home light controls goes for $175 if you were interested in that. You also have LED interior lighting up here, which is pretty sticking cool. It has a nice little design to it. So I liked that as well. Wireless phone charger is coming standard on the XSC. That's actually located just in front of the heated seat button. So that's pretty cool to find that. You get automatic climate control for the SE and nightshade trims, meaning you just set the temperature it's going to automatically hit it for you if you want a dual zone climate control for both driver and passenger go with the xsc that we have with us here today surrounding the shifter you actually have some uh leather finishes that's pretty sticking cool gloss black finishes as well leather wrap shift boot just behind that you got your dual cup holders and electromechanical parking brake and within the center armrest there's a little bit of storage just not a ton but you do have a usb charging port and a 12 volt power outlet in there as well so um, you got some gloss black finishes found in the doors, a lot of soft touch finishes on the doors as well, some silver door handles, and as far as just cruising when you're driving this thing, my elbow rests were perfectly comfortable as well, nothing was like super hard or anything like that, so overall it's nothing crazy, but I think Toyota did a pretty darn good job with the interior quality, I don't have any issues there, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen, it's going to be an 8 inch color touchscreen display that comes standard for all trim levels across the board, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but you also get wireless 
Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you can display navigation up there through that if you wanted to, that's pretty sticking cool. You can check out your driving statistics actually up there as well, it's just checking that out for a little bit. You can also check out your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find six speakers for the SE and the Nightshade, but then an eight speaker JBL sound system with our XSE that we have with us here today. So that's pretty stinking cool because you guys know what we have to do next here. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out our JBL sound system that we have with us here today. Dude, I am telling you guys, usually with Christian radio, you don't find that type of bass. That was intense. Like that was rumbling the seat a little bit. That was nice. Plenty of clarity as well. I actually had a JBL subwoofer in my first car back in the day, my Acura RSX, and uh, that was pretty stinking cool too. So they are known for bass for sure. That was an incredible sound system. JBL has been around for forever now. So well done Toyota putting that in the Corolla hatch. I love it. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Corolla hatch in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality rear view camera in the world, but it certainly gets the job done, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. You cannot beat that. You gotta love that. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard you get a driver's knee airbag up front as well passenger seat cushion airbag to go along with that rear seat mounted side impact airbags as well which by the way is a 700 dollars option on most mercedes so kind of cool it comes standard on this thing also in the back you got latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard of course toyota safety sense 3.0 that gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection dynamic radar cruise control lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, and proactive driving assist then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Corolla hatch, of course you have to start with the brilliant reliability. You can take a look at any Consumer Reports magazine and that will substantiate that. These things are known for going well over 200,000 miles, so pretty sticking cool there. Great safety as well. You can't beat an IIHS top safety pick plus. So those are always the two things I look for first in a car these days. Uh, both sound systems are actually good. Now I did test out the JBL sound system with us here today, but I tested the six speaker sound system in the Corollas plenty of times before. And that's actually really good as well. Not as good as the JBL obviously, but it's pretty darn good for a six speaker sound system, if I'm being honest. As far as room for improvement goes, I'll give you two things here. Rear seat legroom is kind of minimal with the hatchback. Like I said previously, if you want a little more rear seat legroom, go with the Corolla sedan, as opposed to the hatchback, you can get that. And I think ambient lighting would look pretty stinking cool in here as well, because it's in that segment, especially like hatchbacks, they're kind of sportier. People are looking for ambient lighting because they think it looks cool too. So multicolor, specifically multicolor ambient lighting that lets the uh, driver pick which color they want to do. Um, it's something that Hyundai does, it's something that Kia does, a lot of other manufacturers do like Volkswagen. So wouldn't mind seeing that in the Corolla hatchback. But that pretty much rounds out this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe with the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold.